What's up guys, it's Leet Coder. This is Leet Code 322, Coin Change. So we're given an array of coins and we're given an amount like 11 here. And we have to figure out the fewest number of coins that we need to make up that amount. And we can assume we have an infinite number of coins. And if we can't make up the amount, we have to return negative one. Now in this case here, greedy algorithm works, right? All we do is we get the maximum coin, we subtract it from the amount, so it goes to six, then we get the maximum coin. Okay, we subtract it from the amount again, so now it becomes one. And then, okay, the maximum coin doesn't work. So we go to two, two doesn't work. Okay, then we go to one and one works. Now our remaining amount is zero. And so we just returned three because we did it three times. However, what about this case here? So our amount is six and the answer here is gonna be two because three and three is the only way you can get to six. But if we do our greedy algorithm, we would subtract five from six, so we'd get one. And then we see there are no coins that go into one here. So we would have to return negative one. That doesn't work. What we really have to do is we have to try all possible combinations. So we're at this six here. So current amount is six. And we have to see, okay, if we subtract five from this, so it becomes one, can anything go into that one? No, okay. So in this case, we return negative one. Okay, the other case we do is six minus three, which becomes three, and then three minus three becomes zero. So we return in this case two. And the thing to note here is that we don't ever try a coin that's greater than the current amount. Okay, so back to this example here, how would this algorithm work? Let's, let's try with the one first. We do this, so it becomes 10, right? And then we would try it again with one and so on and so forth, right? This would take a, little, a while, so I'm not gonna write the whole thing out. Then we would try the same thing like this, and then we would try it with 10 minus two and so forth. And then we would do the same thing with two, and then we do the same thing with five. And of course, at each step, we would have to try every other possible coin. So you can see that this grows rather exponentially, and it would be a really slow algorithm. So how can we optimize that? Generally, whenever you have recursion, you can first of all turn it into an iterative algorithm. And second of all, when you have an iterative algorithm, you can memoize or store things in a data structure and reuse those values later. And this is called dynamic programming. So instead of starting out from a big value and going smaller, we start from a small value and kind of build up. So what do I mean by that? So we're actually going to loop through each number all the way up until 11. So we want to have a data structure where each key represents an amount like one, two, three, four, five, all the way up until 11. And each value represents the fewest number of coins needed to make up that amount. We start out with one. The fewest number of coins needed to make one is just one because we can make that with this coin here. Then we go to two. Again, the fewest number of coins needed is one because we have a two here. Then we get to this three. Well, the fewest number of coins needed to make three is really the fewest number of coins needed to make two plus one or the fewest number of coins needed to make one plus one. So this really equals the minimum of our data structure at one plus one and data structure at two plus one. And so why does this work? Well, we know that we can subtract two from three to get to one, and then we just use the previous value here, right? We also know that we can subtract one from three and get two and use the previous value. And we just want the minimum of those. And so this is very similar to the recursion that we were doing, but we actually just have the values already stored. So we don't have to do any recalculation. And then same thing for four. So four is gonna be exactly the same. So minimum of DP, at two plus one and three plus one. So hopefully that makes sense. This is kind of the intuition behind it. And all we do is we just keep going until we reach the amount that we want and we return that amount. This is an O of amount times coins length algorithm. And then in terms of space complexity, it's just O of amount. Before we get to the code, if you found this helpful so far, please give a like and a subscribe because it really helps the YouTube algorithm. And with that said, let's get to the code. Okay, first let's start out by creating our data structure here. So we'll call it coins needed. Now we need to loop through all the way up until amount. So this is going to be for I in range starting from one all the way up until amount plus one because we need to include amount. And now we loop through each coin. So for coin and coins. And now this is where the algorithm is a little tricky. Coins needed at I is equal to the minimum of coins needed at I 
and coins needed at i minus coin plus one. Now this won't work right now because Python, if you try to access a key in a dictionary that's not there, it's going to raise an error. So what I'm actually going to do is import from collections, import default dict, and I'm going to create a default dictionary here. And the Lambda function is just going to return float infinity. In other words, the default value is infinity or a very large number. So we know that the min will not take that value. For example, let's say i is one and coin is five. It's just going to return infinity and we know the minimum won't take infinity. And the other thing we need to do is set our base case and that's coins needed at zero is equal to just zero because we know that to get to a zero amount, you don't need any coins. And so now we can return coins needed at amount. The problem with this is we aren't accounting for negative one. We have to return negative one when we cannot reach amount with the coins that we have. If there's no way to reach amount, the value there is going to be infinity actually. So what we can do is we can say if coins needed at amount is equal to infinity, we'll just return negative one else will return coins needed at amount. And boom, that's it. So again, for problems like these, it's good to think of a recursive solution first, then try to flip that, make it iterative, make it bottom up if possible, because you wanna build something and store it into a variable data structure. And that's dynamic programming in a nutshell. So if you found this helpful, please give a like and a subscribe because it really helps the YouTube algorithm. And I'll see you next time.